So let's uh, take a look at this handout and rank the forces on those six charges, A through e F. And we're, it looks like uh, they want you to take the direction into account. So let's rank most attractive forces to the most repulsive forces. How do C and D compare? Magnitude. They're going to be the same, right? How about A and B? Here, let me do, do like this. So this is what you say? These are magnitudes. And E and F? <clears throat> Is that what people say? Okay, so let's do the, um, let's get directions in here. Which ones are attractive? A and B, what do those do? A and B attract, right? They're opposites. So those are going to be inward forces. How about C and D? E and F? They're going to repel, right? So what's the, let's do C and D first. What's the force on C due to D? What's our electric force? The formula that guides us here? And what is the distance between them? We're calling that x over 2. So what do we get? We get k, q, uh, what is qc? 2q, right? Did I get that right? K, Q, 
QC is 2Q, QD, and the distance between them is we're just calling that X over 2. So far, so good. And what is that? That's uh, K, Q squared is a 4, and then there's 16. Is that right? How about, um, and we're saying the force on D due to C, what changes? Everything's the same, right? Okay. So those are going to be the same. Now let's do, uh, what should we do, A and B? Force on A due to B, what is it? Okay, so this is the force on A due to B. How does, what changes is in this equation when we look at the force on B due to A? Nothing. Because these two objects are interacting with each other. What did Newton tell us? When two objects interact with each other, the force is always equal and opposite. Right? When A pushes on B, B pushes back with an equal and opposite force. So this is equal to the force on B due to A. We have agreement? Let me get my red pen out. There we go. Newton's pair. When two objects interact with each other, they always interact with equal and opposite forces. <clears throat> A cannot push on B with a different force than B pushes back on A. So what do we know right off the bat? They're, these are going to be paired up, right? A and B are going to be the same. C and D will be the same, and E and F will be the same. Uh, we've got A, B, C, and D figured out. All we need is one more, right? on, what are they, E due to F is going to equal the force on F due to E. Um, what are they? They're both 3Q. So let's rank them. The most repulsive is E and F, right? And then the most attractive is going to be C and D. Is that correct? They, they were uh, 16, and A and B were 8. So they'd go sort of in that order. If we were just ranking the magnitude, then it would be um, C and D would be the greatest magnitude, 
followed by E and F, followed by A and B. You see that? Okay. Okay, so one thing that comes up, we, we're talking about two forces here, two, sorry, two charged objects here, A and B or C and D or E or F, just two charges. And we now know we, how to figure out the force on each of those charges due to the other one. What if I have this situation? A, B, and C. And I want to know the force on B due to A and C. And let's give them, what do you want this one to be? Q. And this one to be 2Q. And this one to be minus 3Q. How's that? These first two are positive. The last one's negative. Add the forces. Because we did this with gravity, didn't we? If these were just three charged objects, uh, sorry, three massive objects, we want to know the force of on B, gravitational force on B due to A and C. You find the force between A and B. You find the force between C and B. And what forces are vectors? We can just vectorally add them and figure out the net force, right? So that's what we're going to do here. We have a fancy name for it. And you know what that means if there's a fancy name for something? It means it's important, right? Superposition. We call it superposition. It means you can ignore all the other ones. You look at each one individually. If you want to know the force on B due to A and C, first look at A, find the force. Then you look at C individually, as if A wasn't there, find the force. And then you add those. Because these are vectors, we add them vectorally. So superposition. We just add up the effects of each one at the position of interest. So what would it be in this case? Now I'm just going to draw in the force between, so here, the force on B is going to equal the force between A and B plus the force between C and, no, the C and B. Okay, so what direction does the force between A and B point? On B. Force on B due to A. Let me say it that way. The force on B due to A. What direction? 